So I'm Barbara Levin, the current chair of 10-year-old Toby's Fund for Reproductive Health Equity. A bit over six months ago, we got an application from St. Taylor, a graduate student in clinical mental health counseling at Adler University. They were requesting an internship at Toby's Fund and joined our volunteer staff in that capacity in March, 2023. It is not an exaggeration to say that since Saint has joined us, everything has changed for the better. And that's not a coincidence. Saint has prompted an enthusiasm, a revitalization, and a hope for the state of reproductive justice at a time when we sorely needed the shove to help propel us into the new world of reproductive health. This is no longer your mother's, or more accurately, my mother's volunteer agency. Personally, I've learned a lot about the LGBTQIA2S plus community, particularly the trans community, as well as methods to expand our reach. All in all, SAINT has been an overall positive for Toby Spun and the reproductive health community in general. And their influence will sustain and most likely not be forsaken or forgotten anytime soon. We cannot thank Saint enough. And now that I've probably completely embarrassed them, we're going to pro proceed with our exit interview as his internship ends soon. What drew you to intern with Toby Spund in the first place? Mm -hmm. So I initially saw a little blurb about Toby Spund on Volunteer Match, looking for something that was social justice oriented that sort of sparked uh, an interest and passion in me. And I think everything that Toby's Fund stood for in the mission statement um, just really called to me. And the fact that Toby's Fund is very explicitly inclusive of all genders um, within and outside of the binary and just all people within the reproductive health realm in general really called to me. And that's what drew me in at first. You've done a lot of deliverables for us. You've mm -hmm. produced a lot. Are, are there any that you are particularly proud of? I think I'd have to say the website. I think that was the first big thing that I did for Toby's Fund. And I is like the whole website overhaul. I really enjoyed that process and collaborating with you and the board and getting feedback from our patrons and the community. Um, I just felt really deeply ingrained within the Toby's Fund community through the recreation of the website um, and the collaboration that that brought. And I think that's what I feel most proud of. Did any of your views about working with a nonprofit um, in the field of reproductive health or a team of volunteers change or change hmm. you during your time? I think specifically working with a nonprofit like Toby's Fund, I, it opened my eyes to a lot of the um, stipulations that come with working with a nonprofit organization and sort of what happens on the back end when you're in an intern position like me as opposed to a volunteer position, you get a little bit more of that context as to what it takes to run a nonprofit organization and how that comes to fruition. Um, and so I think I, I gained a large appreciation for the amount of work that goes into the day-to-day. -day. Um, but I've always volunteered for as long as I can remember. And this like mission and internship has felt close to my heart in that sense. Um, so I can't say that it's changed my mind too much except giving me an even greater appreciation for volunteer work. How do you feel about the future of reproductive rights I'm I'm speaking mostly about in the U.S., but please feel mm. free to extend to anywhere. Most of my context is from within the U.S. Um, I through this internship, I think I feel more optimistic. Mm. Um, 
when you're engaging in reproductive health rhetoric and conversation and trying to keep up to date on the news on your own um, or just seeing things through social media, I think it feels quite isolating and mm -hmm. can feel quite bleak with the state of the US right now, um, especially with the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And I think coming to a community that is on the same page, that is trying to forward equity in the reproductive health realm, um, gives me a lot of hope. There's a lot of people doing the good work, even when that's not portrayed in the media so much. So I'm feeling hopeful moving forward. I think Toby's Fund is moving in a good direction. And I think the country overall and the younger people especially are moving in a good direction. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling hopeful for what we'll be able to do. I think LGBTQIA 2S plus that community has been hard hit. Are you feeling as hopeful about that? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think I go up and down on that. I think there's a long way to go as far as just general public education on what it means to be queer, um, be part of the greater community that doesn't fall into a cisgender or heterosexual identity. Um, and there's just a lot of misinformation or just ignorance towards what reproductive health care looks like across the gender spectrum. Um, and so there's a long way to go as far as educating the public and having legislation become more inclusive because on a large scale, this is talked about as a women's health issue mm -hmm. and even more broadly as a cisgender women's health issue. Um, and when we look at the, the legislation, it's even more narrowly a white cisgender women's health issue. And so we have a long way to go as far yes. as educating the public and advocating for inclusivity and recognition of everyone within reproductive health, regardless of reproductive ability. Um, so I, I'm feeling hopeful that there are individuals who are doing the educating, who are doing the advocating, um, but I think there needs to be a greater push for allyship within those populations of privilege, um, specifically like cisgender white women, um, advocating for their peers and everyone who needs reproductive health care access as well. That's a tall order. It's hard to convey yeah. that. And it's a very slow process. It's very incremental. We can change our vocabulary and slowly I hear people changing their vocabulary, but right. of course you yeah. are so incredibly patient with the fact that our average age at Toby's Fund of the people who have been with it for 10 years is well past reproductive age. So it makes your uh, influence on us as a 20 something so much more um, impactful because right. we're, we've been fighting this fight for many, many years and it's changed and it's hard to remember it's changed. So right. it's another way in that your influence has been so enormous on us with the people and process that are Toby's fun. Is there a specific point or element that might have caused you to think, I've grown having been through this effort? I would say Pride Fest felt like a really pivotal moment to be able to meet some of the board members in person and connect with the community in person. Um, I think being able to go to an area that is not known to be super liberal, mm -hmm. um, not known to have as progressive views as we would like um, as far as reproductive health equity um, and be myself and be gendered correctly by the board and be respected in my identity and in my expertise as far as my education. Um, it felt, it just felt really warm and welcoming to know that I was a value member of Toby's Fund and of the greater community. And it also felt like the largest display of 
recognition of what I've been able to do for Toby's Fund. And I just felt really, really welcomed in that moment. And like I had really grown through my experience and what I was able to bring to fruition throughout the internship. Well, there is no question he brought a tremendous amount and there's no question everybody recognized it. And we were kind of an empty vessel just doing what we'd always been doing. And you truly have changed things. Reproductive rights are a very broad topic with numerous issues related to it. Can you name a specific issue you feel your work helped to shine a light on? The importance of gender diversity within the reproductive health realm. I think I've been able to really speak to my experience as a trans person and a person that isn't necessarily binary in my gender expression and identity. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully help people think about the uh, gender diversity needed within these conversations surrounding reproductive health equity um, and the importance of recognizing that it's not just feminine leaning people or people assigned female at birth that need reproductive health care. Everybody benefits from reproductive health equity and everyone needs reproductive health care to some extent. Um, and I think I've really been able to highlight that and highlight the inclusion of everyone um, as a necessity to forwarding the mission of reproductive health equity. Do you have any thoughts regarding next steps for you? Has this changed the direction or has just mm. reinforced direction? I think a little bit of both. I think the experience with Toby's Fund and just the broadening of my knowledge on reproductive health and the concerns um, about reproductive health that the community has, uh, has informed what I'll be taking with me into my counseling practice. Um, so the next sort of big event in my education will be a clinical internship where I'll start seeing clients. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping to work with an older population, like 60 plus, thinking about reproductive health has really helped me to be fluid in my understanding of the lifespan and of the uh, life issues that exist across the lifespan and can still come up as we age. Um, so I definitely think that this Internship has given me a new perspective and allowed me to be a little bit more plastic in my thinking about what issues and what topics might be important um, that I wouldn't have necessarily thought about previously. I only have two words which is, are, are terribly inadequate, but they're thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for everything. I don't know what we would have done without you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.